Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on radio propagation mechanism. Earlier on, I have done this free space path loss model. Okay, so this free space path loss model can only be used when nothing is in between the transmitter and receiver. Basically, the transmitter and receiver need to have the line of sight. So for this video, I'm going to do on Akumura model. Before I start, I'd like to highlight that Akumura model, in fact, is slightly different from Akumura Hata model. So this video, I'm going to concentrate on Akumura model. And then maybe my next video, I will concentrate on Akumura Hata model. So this video, firstly, I will start off by defining what is Akumura model. When can I actually apply this Akumura model? And also how to apply this Akumura model in order to predict the path loss in between the transmitter and receiver. Again, if you're keen to know more on radio propagation mechanism, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on radio propagation mechanism. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's start off by defining what is actually Akumura model. This Akumura model is a radio propagation model that was built using the data collected in the city of Tokyo, Japan. Okay, so basically this Akumura basically is a Japanese name. And you can see that basically is origin from Tokyo, Japan. The model is ideal for using in city with many urban structure, but not many tall building structure. Okay, so basically it's ideal to use in an urban structure. For example, in Japan, because of earthquake, Basically, the building are not so tall. So hence, for Japan, this Akumura model is quite useful. Okay, so this model actually serves as a base for Hata model. So as I mentioned earlier on, I will do this Akumura Hata model on my next video. So basically, from here, I like to distinguish the difference between Akumura model and Akumura Hata model. Okay, this Akumura model was built into three modes. Okay, the first mode will be on urban, second will be suburban, and then third will be open area. Okay, urban, like what you mentioned, is basically urban structure with not many tall buildings. Suburban, you can see that basically is still considered urban, but maybe lesser building. Open area, basically you can imagine is like a few plantation, etc. Basically is categorized by a big open space. Okay, the a model for urban area was built first and then later basically used as a base for others. Okay, so let's do a very quick understanding on the rules to compliance when we're actually using this Akumura model. Firstly, the frequent range will be from 150 to 1920 MHz. However, typically, okay, it can be actually extrapolate to 3 GHz. So in short, this Akumura model is strictly confined in the frequency band from 150 to 1920 MHz. However, okay, we can easily do this extra polys up to 3 GHz or 3000 MHz. Okay, the mobile station, okay, which means that the receiver antenna, basically the height must be in between 1 meter and 3 meter. Basically, I would say that this will be like cellular. Okay, cellular typically has 1 meter or maybe up to 3 meter height. Okay, the base station antenna height is typically about 30 meter and 100 meter. So as for base station, typically they will mount on top of a building. Okay, basically they have a height roughly about 30 meter and 100 meter. Okay, the link distance, okay, which is the distance between the mobile station and also the base station, typically is from one kilometer and 100 kilometer. Okay, this Akumura model is basically based on measured data. So basically it's not so much on the proving, it's based on the measured data Okay, they establish some relationship and finally, this will be the path loss. Let me quickly go through this Akumura model path loss here. 
So you can see from here, this is the equation for Akumura model path loss. Okay, this FSPL is basically free space path loss. This is what I have discussed early on by implementing the equation of free space path loss equation. Okay, I'll go through this in black. These two I will go through in blacks. Okay, so basically this is the gain of a transmitter antenna. This will be the gain of a receiver antenna. Okay, firstly, let's understand on this free space path loss equation. Earlier on, I have derived this free space path loss equation. So basically, this equation here will give us the value in terms of dB in free space path loss. Okay, so we need this. Okay, so as I mentioned, basically, this is the gain of the transmit antenna. So there are actually two kinds. Okay, so basically, if the height of the transmit antenna is in between 1000 meter to 30 meter, then we will use this equation. If the height of the transmitting antenna is less than 30 meter, then we will use this equation. Okay, so before we know which equation to use, we need to take a look on the height of the transmitting antenna, whether okay, we will use the first case or we will use the second case. Same as for the receiver, okay, for this particular case here, when the receiver, the height is basically less than three meter, then we will use this equation. Again, when the height of the receiver is in between three meter and 10 meter, then we will use this equation. You realize that this is 10, this is 20. Again, from here, you can see that this is 20, this is 10. Okay, basically, like what I mentioned earlier on, this Akumura model is basically based on measured data rather than proving of this equation. So therefore, there is no interpolation how you actually can relate these two equations, but majority fall on the measured data and basically they draw a conclusion and basically they arrive at this Okay, like I mentioned earlier on, I will explain on the next two slides on this and this and actually what are them. Akumura was developed to estimate the medium antenna for free space of 3 meter. Okay, so basically this is what we call the medium antenna. Okay, I come to this, basically this is a medium antenna okay, when we actually apply this Akumura model. Okay, this curve will generate from extensive measurement with vertical omnidirection antenna on both base and mobile station as a function of frequency in the range of 100 to 1920 megahertz and the distance from the base and mobile station from 1 to 100 kilometer. Okay, so let's take a look on this diagram here. Okay, so basically this will be frequency. Okay, you can see that there are actually two vertical bar. Okay, this bar here basically is a distance Okay, the distance in between the base station and also the receiver station. What will be the distance? Basically, it is governed by this vertical bar here. It's from 1 kilometer to 100 kilometer. Okay, on the other side here, basically, will be the media antenna. Okay, basically, this will be in dB. Okay, so later on, I will use an example. How can we actually make use of this graph in order to obtain the medium antenna? Next. Okay, this G area, okay, basically is the gain due to the type of environment. Okay, remember, as I shared with you early on, okay, Akumura model is basically based on three modes. Okay, first one will be urban. Okay, urban basically is on a built-out city or large town, crowded with large building and two or more story house. Basically, you can see that uh, the building are not that high-rise. Okay, basically, they actually built in a very large town. So, with this, we will use this under the urban environment. Suburban will be on a village or highway scattered with trees and a house, which means that they are not that dense yet. Typically, it's small village or maybe also highway, okay, which all the obstacles will be scattered around. Open, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, open means that typically you can imagine that there won't be any big obstacle, no obstacle like tall trees or building okay, in the propagation path and a plot of land which is clear of anything 300 to 400 meters ahead. Okay, so basically, let's not do well so much. Basically, what I want to say is this Akumura model, there are three types. One will be urban, suburban, and open. Okay, so later on, I will give you an example how we actually can use this G area to obtain the Akumura model path loss. Okay, let's do with an example first. Okay, firstly, find the path loss using Akumura model for a distance of 50 kilometer. Okay, the height of the transmitting antenna will be 100 meter. 
and the height of the receiver antenna will be 10 meter in a suburban environment. Okay, so this is a keyword, suburban environment. Basically for a GSM, GSM means that the frequency will be at 900 megahertz. GSM will be 2G. And nowadays, honestly, not many places use 2G. Okay, but this Akumura basically will be a very useful tool to determine, okay, mainly for GSM market. Let's take a look how we actually do this example here. So the task I'm going to do is I need to determine the path loss. What will be the loss in between the transmitter, which is the base station, and also the receiver, which is the mobile station? What will be the path loss? Early on, I have introduced you this equation. Okay, so over here, as I told you that this will be the free space path loss. I will go through those in black. Okay, on the next slide. Okay, I have also briefly discussed the gain of the transmitter antenna and the gain of the receiver antenna. Let's start by doing this equation. Okay, let's start by, firstly, let's do the free space path loss equation here. Okay, so this is the free space path loss equation. As you can see there, I need to have, firstly, the distance. Okay, the distance is 50. Okay, so therefore, the distance is 50 kilometer. The frequency is 900 megahertz. And the C, which is the speed of the electromagnetic wave, let's assume it to be the speed of the light, which is 3 times 10 power 8 meter per second. And from here, I can calculate that the free space path loss equation will be 125.5 dB. Okay, so I managed to find this first term, which is 125.5 dB. Next, okay, let's move towards the gain of the transmitting antenna. As I told you that there will be two sets, so which one to use? Firstly, take a look. Okay, basically, the height of the transmit antenna will be 100 meter. So therefore, they fall under this zone here. Okay, so this will not be eligible. So therefore, I will use this equation to find the gain of the transmit antenna. Okay, so what you need to do is basically, I have the height of the transmit antenna, which is 100 meter. So I do this. And from here, I can calculate the gain of the transmit antenna will be minus 60 B. Okay, next, let's focus on the gain of the receiver antenna. Okay, so again, there are two sets of formula. Okay, before we actually can do this, we need to take a look on the height of the receiver. Okay, so you can see that the height of a receiver is 10 meter. So definitely, I cannot use this first one. So I need to use the second one. So once I use the second one, I need to use this equation to calculate the gain of the receiver. So from here again, the height will be 10. So from here, I can calculate that the gain of the receiver antenna will be 10.46 dB. So from here, you can see that I successfully calculate what is the free space path loss equation. I successfully calculate the gain of the transmission antenna. I also successfully calculate the gain of the receiver antenna. What I left will be these two, which I'm going to show it to you now. Okay, again, before I continue, okay, so if you find this video helpful, please help this channel by like this video and also consider to subscribe to this channel. Let's quickly find how we actually can so-called find the antenation, okay, AMU, okay, which is this part here, AMU, okay, which is the function of distance and also frequency. Okay, firstly, as you know that the distance is 50 kilometer and the frequency is 900 megahertz. So how can we do this? Okay, you can see that this is basically a function of frequency. So I need to find 900, okay, because this is a log. Okay, so basically they are around here. Okay, and then I just draw a line. And remember the distance is 50 kilometer. So this is the line for kilometer. So 900 megahertz, I draw until it touch the 50 kilometer. And then I draw a vertical, a horizontal line, sorry. I draw a horizontal line. And therefore from here, I can see that my media antenna will be 44 dB. Okay, so let me explain this again. Okay, the question actually told me that the frequency will be 900 megahertz and basically the distance will be up to 50 kilometer. Okay, so all this line, basically they are all in terms of distance, in terms of kilometer. So I focus on this 50 kilometer line. Okay, the frequency using is 900. So therefore I draw a straight line on 900 and basically they touch this line here. And again, I draw a horizontal line. Okay, so therefore I can compute that the media intonation is actually 44 dB. Okay, so next. Okay, so basically again, this will be 900. Again, I draw a line. You can see that basically these are the three modes for Akumura model. Okay, if it's suburban, it will be 9 dB. 
Okay, if it's a quad side open area, it will be 22 dB. If it's an open area, it will be 27.5. For this question, actually it's on an urban, suburban area. Okay, as is seen over here, will be a suburban environment. So therefore, okay, they will be have a G area of 9 dB. Okay, so I have successfully over here compute the medium antenation, which is 44 dB, and have also do this correction factor G area, which is 9 dB for a suburban area. Okay, so now I'm ready to calculate the path loss. Okay, so this is what I have calculated early on, which is 125.5 dB. So next, I have also shown early on how to calculate the gain of the transmit antenna, which is minus 6, and the gain of the receiving antenna, which is 10.46. On the graph, I have also obtained this. Okay, so which this is actually the medium antenation over here, okay, which is 44 dB. And I have also so-called successfully calculate this G area or the correction factor here. Okay, for suburban will be 9. So therefore, this part will be 9. So with this, I'm ready to do the calculation of path loss. Okay, the path loss is actually this equation here. So earlier on, I have calculated the free space path loss. This will be 44. Okay, this will be minus 6. This will be 10.46. And the G area correction factor will be minus 9. And from here, I can compute that the path loss using this Akumura model okay, for this situation will be 156.04 dB. Okay, so over here, you can see that firstly, I derive what is Akumura model. So next, okay, I have explained the key thing of the equation of the Akumura model. And also last but not least, I use this example to illustrate how can we actually apply this Akumura model in order to calculate the path loss. Okay, with this, i like to end my discussion. Please stop to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.